Hello, this video covers installation of CMON 19.3 using the recommended settings. CMON contains a database and a web server component. The database component can utilize built-in SQLite database or Microsoft SQL, all editions, and the web server component can utilize the built-in web server or Microsoft IIS web server. Novastore recommends the use of Microsoft SQL for the database and Microsoft IIS for the web server, especially if more than five backup agents will be connecting to the CMON. Novastore recommends using Microsoft SQL Express 2014 or above, as there are some performance improvements compared to earlier versions. In this example, we'll be using SQL Express installed under Windows Server 2016 operating system. First of all, you're going to want to install the IIS web server and if that's not already installed, you're going to go into Server Manager and install IIS Web Server as well as the IIS 6 Management Compatibility role. If you already have IIS installed, you will also need to install that IIS 6 Management Compatibility role now. So go ahead and browse over to Server Manager. Once inside the Management Server, you're going to go ahead and click on Manage, then Add Roles and Features. From this screen, click Next, Next again, Next again. Uh, scroll down to where it will list Web Server IIS as a component. Click the checkbox, do Add Features, and then Next, Next again, Next again. And this is where you'll configure that add-on IIS 6 management compatibility. So browse down to the bottom, and you should see it in the list there. Go ahead and click the checkbox, then Next, do an Install. And that's going to install in the background. While that's going, we're going to go ahead and install Microsoft SQL Express, which is a free edition of Microsoft SQL. Uh, so we're going to use Google and browse to our search for SQL Express here. Uh, the first result is going to be the one that we want. In your case, you know, pick the one that works best for you. We're going to go with SQL Server 2017 Express Edition. Click the link and then you'll have a download button to click on here. Once that's downloaded, go ahead and click it to launch the uh, installer. We're going to use the basic and the basic works just fine. And do an accept of the license terms and then we're going to install to the default location. Click install. Uh, you can go ahead and close your web browser down. When both SQL Server and Microsoft IIS are done installing, we'll continue the video at that point. So at this point, we can see that SQL Server 2017 Express has finished installing. We will also install SSMS, SQL Server Management Studio here, uh, using this option. Uh, this is an additional component of Microsoft SQL Server. For modern versions of SQL Server like this, there will be an Install SSMS button on screen. Uh, this is an older version of SQL Server, or if you already have SQL Server installed but do not have SQL Management Studio installed, go ahead and install that now separately before proceeding as that can be installed after the core SQL Server software is installed. SQL Management Studio will be required in the next step to configure SQL for mixed mode operation and enable the SA user. So we'll go ahead and click uh, Install SSMS. It's going to launch a web browser and get us to a download link which is here, and uh, we'll wait for that download and come back. Okay, the file has finished downloading. We're going to go ahead and click on the executable, and here we have the install button for the SSMS, and the installation has started, and we'll come back when it's done. And now the SQL Server Management Studio installation has completed. You can go ahead and click close there, and you can close the web browser. And then on the installation of SQL Server, you can go ahead and click close. And on this screen, you just click yes to exit. And then in the background here, we do see that Server Manager has told us that uh, IIS is done installing. You can go ahead and click close on that screen and close out of Server Manager. Now that all the SQL Server components are done installing, as well as the IIS component, we can go ahead and configure SQL Server for the SA user, as well as mixed mode authentication. So to do that, we're going to go into our Start menu, go down to SQL Server Tools, and open up SQL Server Management Studio. In your case, this uh, shortcut might be in a different place, um, but it's always going to be called Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. Wait for that to load. Uh, once you're at the uh, login screen, you're going to log in with 
Windows authentication method, which is the default. And then you're going to go ahead and click connect here. Now there's two things we're going to need to do if this is a clean installation of SQL Server. In your case, your SQL Server might have already been installed, so these are just items you're going to have to check based on this list. So in order for Simon to install the database properly, SQL needs to be in mix mode authentication, which is Windows plus SQL Server authentication mode, and the SA user has to be defined as well as the password set and the ability for the SA user to log in has to be enabled. So we'll go through those uh, three items. Uh, first of all, you're going to right click on the root object, go to properties, and we're going to go down to security on the left side. And like I said, by default it uses Windows authentication mode. We're going to choose mix mode authentication here, and we're going to click OK. It's going to tell you that these configuration changes can't take effect until SQL Server is restarted. And uh, let's go ahead and do that. So we'll exit out and we'll go to services and we'll go browse down to all the SQL Server components and right click on the primary SQL Server SQL Express object there. In your case it might just say SQL Server. Uh, do a restart. And that should be done. Now we're going to go back and find our uh, SQL Server Management Studio shortcut. Click on that. And again, we're going to log in with the Windows authentication method. Now at this point, we're going to go down to security on the left side, then logins. And then you see SA user, in our case, is disabled for login. So it has a little red X on it. I'll right click that and do a properties. And I'm going to go ahead and define a password for that SA user. And then I'm going to go down to server roles just to make sure it has the right server roles. In this case, it is right in that it has public and sysadmin checked there. Uh, and then you're going to go down to status. And this one's the key one. You need to have this one enabled because by default, they disable the login for SA. So I'm going to say enabled there and then click OK. And it won't take effect right away. You do have to uh, disconnect and reconnect to the Object Explorer. So I'm going to say File Menu and then Disconnect Object Explorer. And then File Menu Connect Object Explorer. And then this time I'm going to log in with that SA user. So in Authentication pull-down, I'm going to choose SQL Server Authentication. I'm going to give it the SA user and the password that I just defined. And then click Connect. And then this time it lets me log in. You're all done here with what you need to do in Management Studio. I'm going to go ahead and exit out. So go ahead and double click on your Setup NB Simon installer. Go ahead and click Install. And then we're going to click Next here. Uh, I accept Next. Next again if we want to go with the, the default installation location. In our case, we are Next. And here we're picking the SQL Server provider. So in our case, we're picking Microsoft SQL Server. Click Next. And for the SQL Server choice, it's already defaulting to the right one, which is our local SQL Express Server. And the local is specified by the, the period and the slash there. Um, if you wanted to, you could pick a, an alternate SQL Server. In our case, we're going to use the default, but you do have the ability to use the ellipsis and browse to another SQL Server. And I'm also going to choose for authentication the SQL Server method, which is required for CMON. And we're going to specify that SA user and password. And for the database name, we're going to leave it as the default management server. Click Next. And on this screen, this is where we specify the Windows user that has access to the SQL database. So in our case, that's a local administrator account. That might differ in your case. If it's a domain user, you're going to need to fill in the domain and then that username and password that has admin rights. Uh, as a Windows user to your SQL Server. Uh, I already know at this point that my local administrator does have sysadmin rights inside SQL, but you need to verify that before proceeding here. And you verify that through SQL Server Management Studio, which is the SSMS component that we installed separately earlier. And go ahead and click Next here, and it will verify those credentials. If they are incorrect, it will tell you they are incorrect, and you'll be able to correct those. And at this point, it wants us to activate online. So I'm going to put some credentials here as a test user. Click Next. 
And then on this screen, it's the web server provider choice. So we're going to pick Microsoft IIS next. And if you were able to get to this screen, then it means that all the components for IIS web server were installed, including the IIS 6 management compatibility add-on role that uh, we discussed earlier in the video. Um, if you weren't able to make it this screen, just go ahead and go back to uh, server manager and install that role as the video describes. And then uh, come back to this installation, rerun the installation and get to this step again. Um, so you have various choices here for the configuration of the website in IIS. We're going to go with the defaults and management server is going to be the virtual directory. Click next here. And this is the uh, server address for the CMON. This is what the backup clients are going to point to as far as the variable for the CMON server. You do have the ability to put a fully qualified domain name. Uh, we're going to go with the IP method. And so that's the uh, IP of this machine. Uh, if we just take a look in command prompt, that's the IP address of this machine. Um, the port 4502 is our default data port. So that's the communication between the backup clients and CMON server. Um, you do have the ability to change that, but we're going to leave it at default. Click next and then install. You're going to get the uh, status bar here. We'll come back after it's done. So at this point, we can see that the installation of CMON has completed and then hit finish. And uh, once that's complete, uh, you're going to click uh, OK here on the application installed. And then if Nova Backup Client is on the same system, in this example, we have Nova Backup 19.3 installed locally on the system. I can go ahead and launch that and show you how to connect that backup client to the CMON as an agent. So once Nova Backup has started, you're going to go over to the large circle button at the top left, hit default settings, go over to CMON server tab, and then fill in that IP address. If you don't recall what the IP address, you can always do an IP config on the machine. In this case, it's the IP address that's listed there. Uh, so we're going to go to enter that and in our case, it's 0 0.132. Port number is 4502 because we left that as the default. And then you can click Start Service here. What that's going to do is it's going to set a service, which I'll show you here. You see this message that says the service has started? That's a good sign. Um, but you want to uh, also see how the service is set up. So I'm going to go to Windows Services, which is services.msc command. I already had it uh, tagged there. Um, so it's going to be the service called Backup Client Agent Service. And that's the service that the uh, configuration on the CMON server tab did just now for us. It came over to this service and it set it as automatic delayed start for the startup type. And then it started the service itself. So that means that every you know boot of the computer, it'll be an automatic uh, service start. Go ahead and minimize that. And you can click OK now on the CMON server tab. And uh, we can do uh, minimize here on Nova Backup Client. And at this point, we're going to show you uh, the first connection of the CMON web server uh, from the machine that CMON's installed on. So you're going to come to your start menu and look for the Nova Store folder that just got created during the installation of CMON. Expand that. You're going to see a bunch of icons. The main one would be a shortcut called Nova Backup CMON, and that's a usually associated to the Internet Explorer web browser on the system. Left click on that and it's going to load your web browser. We can click OK there. It's going to load up Internet Explorer, direct you to the login page for the CMON. The default here is going to be admin for the username and admin for the password, all lowercase. You could say remember me. I'm just going to hit login here and expand the uh, size. So once logged in, you'll see the dashboard screen for Nova Backup CMON. It's going to show you various items, including the agents and job history. The agents is what uh, backup clients are connecting to the CMON. In our case, we have that one agent connecting. And uh, the name of that agent is here on the left side, as well as the status. It shows connected. If you wanted to, you could double click on that uh, listing of that agent and see various details, including IP address, a computer name, a Nova Backup version, and addition. You can also do the same thing with that view button there. Um, the bottom half of the screen is going to show you the job history. In our case, we have no jobs found. That's because I haven't actually run any backup jobs on this computer's Nova Backup. 
Uh, but if I had, uh, it would show that job history here uh, for the logs. Um, so at this point, what I would recommend to do is bookmark this in your browser, this address. So I'm going to go ahead and say add to favorites, add. And then I'm going to also uh, left click, drag and drop that address over to the desktop like so. And then at this point I can show uh, if we go back into Nova Backup, we're going to uh, go ahead and create a test job just to see if that job history reporting is going to be working for us. So we're going to just uh, back up a single item. It's going to be that shortcut that we created on the desktop. So I'm going to say test backup and I'm going to back it up to my C temp folder as test backup. Just type that in and do a backup. And it completed successfully so can go and minimize Nova Backup and then go back to the CMON. So now back in the Nova Backup CMON dashboard we can see the job history does show the one job that was successfully completed uh, and you can see the details of that job as well as view it. If I click view uh, you'll see the actual you know full log of that successful backup where I backed up the single file. And that concludes this video overview for the recommended installation method for CMON 19.3. If you'd like to watch the usage video for the overview of how to use CMON, you can follow the link in the description. Thank you again for paying attention.